Hey, we've reached the end of our season and review segment for the NHL anyway. Uh, it's Jim and Trent here, uh, MidwestHockey.info. This is our fifth and final look at the uh, Midwest-based NHL teams. And now we're going to be talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets, a team that always seems to suck me in every <laughs> year. Uh, I think that it's going to be their season. And I know when I wrote the uh, when I wrote the story for the uh, website on them, I talked a little bit about that. They always seem to have a lot of good young promise. They draft they draft extremely well in recent years. Uh, it hasn't converted into uh, on ice success as of yet. Two years ago, I think they could blame injuries. They were they seemed like right as soon as the season started, they were hit with injuries. But as you look at this, uh, the numbers we're going to give you now, that definitely was not the case this past season. Uh, they started off the season really with an abysmal uh, start. They stumbled out of the gate, uh, fired their coach. I think before we were 10 games into the season, John Tortorella came in, and he has mostly pointed the finger of blame at the veterans on this team. And I think because of that, this is going to be a very interesting summer for them, Trent. Yeah, and it's, you know, you hate saying it over and over and over and over because it's just like, it gets sickening. But this is a team, they have the young talent going forward. Oh, they should be a team on the rise. Now, the question is, can they put it together? Can they rise to the occasion? Um... It's tough to say. You want to say you want to get behind this team. Not a lot of success there in recent years, apart from the brief playoff um, appearance. But you kind of want to get behind them. You want to see this team thrive, and they just haven't been able to get it up and running. Yeah. Well, I do. I will say this: uh, the team uh, will definitely be younger this season. They almost have to be because of the. Uh, while the, the uh, Jackets struggled, uh, they finished uh, 28 out of 30 NHL teams this year. The, uh, the Affiliates team in Cleveland, the Lake Erie Monsters, uh, with about 10 games left to go in the American Hockey League season, went on a run that didn't stop until they hoisted the Calder Cup. They lost two playoff games. That's all they. There was only one team that beat them in the postseason. That was uh, the Grand Rapids Griffins. Uh, they swept three out of four series, hoisted the uh, Calder Cup, and uh, there's some good young talent that we know is coming up. Mm -hmm. And we also know that they're going to add probably an NHL-ready player uh, on draft day. Uh, it looks like they probably will with third overall. Uh, I mean, if you believe pretty much everybody who's made the predictions... They would be adding Jesse Pugliarvi, who uh, this is the guy who's followed the very, him very closely. Uh, he was a player that uh, Trent was talking about last year, and all he did was have an amazing World Junior and then an amazing World Championships. Uh, so you're pretty excited about the potential out of that guy. Mm -hmm. um, still some talk that they may swing a deal, and if they do, they'll, you know, that'll add a, a frontline player for sure. But uh, Definitely, they're going to be adding some a lot of talent between now and September. Yeah, and I think the I think the reason they might be looking to trade the third overall pick is, is to uh, get a center as opposed to a wing, which uh, Plea RB plays. But man, he is an exciting player. I know we're not um, talking about the draft right now, but he is a very exciting player. He stood out to me in last year's World uh, World Juniors. Right, yeah. So not this most recent year, the following year. He was 16 years old, yeah. standing out, um, and he was very impressive, very yeah. impressive. Yeah, I know, like I, like I said, I know that you've really sort of had your eye on him for quite a while. Let's go through the lineup uh, quickly here. Um, it'll be interesting uh, because there are some veterans that lead at every position. We're not sure if they're going to be back in the fall or not. Uh, mark my words, this will be John Tortorella's team when the fall comes. If he was not happy with somebody, that player will not be back. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm not sure how he is working with a young team. I don't know if he's ever done that before, but he's not shy about making it happen. Uh, and, you know, he knows the players that he wants. Yeah. So let's talk about at center. The team was led by Boone Jenner. Uh, listen, listen to the amount of players here, Trent. You know, we talked about injuries the year before. Look at the amount of players that played, you know, 75 plus games for the Jackets this year. And if you mm -hmm. look at center, Boone Jenner played all 82. He had 49 points with 30 goals. So that's not a bad season for yeah. a, a young 23 year old. Brandon Dubinsky played 75 games. Uh, 17 goals, 31 assists. Maybe not uh, quite what you expect from a guy like Dubinsky. Uh, and then you have William Carlson, who played 81 games, 20 points. And Gregory Campbell, who played all 82 games and uh, picked up three goals and eight assists uh, as a defensive center. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Uh, three guys with 80-plus and all four of the players I named with over 75 or 75 plus. Yeah, and I I really like Boone Jenner. I know I know I'm very I'm fairly confident that he played a lot of wing this year. Okay. I know he's listed as a center. Yeah. Uh, cuz that's what he played prior to the NHL. And they might look to move him there depending on if they get decide to keep the number 3 uh, or trade him for a center. Right. But um Boone Jenner 30 goals, 23 years old. I mean this is things NHL GMs dream about. Yeah. So, man, very successful year for him. And, you know, Dubinsky's starting to get their 30. But he's a good, he's more of a two-way player, not just an offensive force. But good leader for that team. And, you know, it's something that Columbus can get excited about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on the right side, Cam Atkinson. Also, 81 games played. Uh, he's 27. He picked up 53 points this year. Uh, and then after that, there's a bit of a drop. Now, I'm not sure if these guys played. Uh, you mentioned Boone Jenner. He might have been a right winger for a lot of the season. Uh, Rennie Bork with 49 games played. David Clarkson. Uh, th that's a bit of a disaster there, actually. Uh, Clarkson... Uh, a player who's seen his numbers drop substantially every year mm -hmm. this past season. 23 games played, four points. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, future holds for David Clarkson. Uh, I know they were talking about a buyout maybe. I'm not sure if they passed that deadline or not. But, uh, um, you know, it's just it's a really it's a big uh, albatross for this team having him. Uh, his huge contract. And uh, right now, I think that's about $3 million per goal. So, and that's a good long contract. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate because Clarkson, I think, is a, is a player that plays with a lot of heart, but uh, just not really sure what's happened in recent years. Jared Bull, similar, uh, 30 game, uh, 30 game play, three points. So, on the right side, definitely uh, some work to do. Well, in Jared Bull's situation, he's not there. He didn't sign a contract that implies he should be a goal scorer. Good point. Where, uh, you know, you definitely got that with Clarkson. And that wasn't necessarily as big of a mistake as it looks because they traded an unusable player yeah. that was counting against their cap, Nathan Horton, to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, because Toronto was able to bury his contract. And they got a player back with a slightly less... Um, expensive contract that can actually be on yeah. the ice. So, as bad as it is, you know he's making five point five and a quarter mil uh, for this foreseeable future. It's not as bad as you want it to be, or as it looks, just because compared to the way it was before with the yeah. the six and a half million uh, from Horton, that was completely unusable. You know, you got someone that can be on the ice even if it's only 23 games. Yeah, he's just selling a uniform right now. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say that because I really I really love Clarkson. Uh, he's a great physical player. He plays with mm -hmm. a lot of heart. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's not... Uh, he clearly, you know, had some injury problems this year. He only played 23 games. So, uh, so we'll just leave that at that. And who knows? Maybe things will turn <laughs> around there. But I, I, I do think that Clarkson probably will not be with this team in the fall. They'll figure out something. 
Uh, on the left side, there's definitely some talent there. Brandon saw it, uh, a lot of a lot of eyes on him at with the big trade, you know, with the uh, Hawks and EC Mont going the other way and having a great season. Uh, saw it. Now, this is the player that they figure this team is going to be built around. Uh, he's a veteran at 23. He's a good, you know, young player. Oh, yeah. Uh, played 78 games last year, 53 points, 31 goals. Um, I think, all things considered, uh, a pretty solid season for him yeah. with better yet to come. Oh, yeah, definitely. 23 years old. Yeah. Like you said, he's played a lot of NHL. He's played in the NHL a lot. And... 31 goals is a very good season for any player, really, yeah. unless you're Patrick Kane. Um, but to hit that 30 goal mark at 23, both him and Jenner, I mean, those are that's something to get excited about, Columbus. Yeah. You know, Scott Hartnell, another player that I that I uh, generally have always admired. Uh, 34 years old, he played 79 games. Scored 23 uh, for, for and picked up 49 points. Not terrible numbers. Uh, his name has come up quite often, though, uh, in trade talk. Um, possibly part of if they were going to trade that third overall, he's a player they might look to get included in that. Um, just because of the big contract. They mm -hmm. do have some big contracts. This team uh, financially is... Uh, in a bit of a pickle right now, but they do have some good young talent coming up too. Yeah, uh, Nick Foligno, the captain, he was the made him the captain last year. Uh, numbers maybe down a little bit. He played 72 games, 12 goals, 25 assists. Um, he's not so much looked at, you know, because of his numbers. He, he uh, makes his presence felt in other ways, but uh, maybe a little bit of a boost would be nice. He, he could probably be a 20 goal scorer. Yeah, you know, it's something you look at as at, from your captain. You want them to be, you're not always looking for an offensive or just a point producer as a captain. It's more about leadership. I, you know, I'm gonna agree to that. But you definitely want more yeah. from him. So that being said, you definitely want more from him. Yeah. Matt Calvert, 26. Uh, he had 24 points, and uh, you know he's a, he's a good role player. He again, he played 73 games. So certainly, you know, while the season before it seemed like this team was really plagued by injuries, uh, they certainly can't fall back on that excuse like from last. Year. No, definitely not. But let's look at the defense, uh, where you know this did. That's a team or the area that this team has wanted to address. I think for for many seasons they took a a fairly big step towards that this past season with the uh, massive trade uh, Johansson for uh, Seth Jones from Nashville uh, a 21 year old defenseman uh, you know he's still learning he's still sort of making his uh, imprint on the team three goals 28 assists 31 points uh, he will be a key player on this team uh, and they just need to be a little bit patient with him yeah, that was. A, I really like that trade. It's a good hockey trade. It sure is. Um, forward for defensemen. I think in the end, Columbus is going to get the better of the end of that, just because I think Seth Jones. He's going to be a true number one defenseman. Right. And I think he's going to be a top five defenseman in the NHL. You know, five years from now, maybe sooner. Who knows? But. I mean, he is a great defenseman, moves the puck well, does does really everything you want from a defenseman. And there's always more value on defensemen, which is why I say they're going to get the better end of that one. But, man, great kid, great hockey player, bright future. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, they're going to have uh, a good young defense this coming season. Uh, you know, he's not on our list here, but the one guy... I think that maybe has uh, the best shot of making the jump from that successful team in uh, Cleveland is Zach Wierenski. Uh I believe he might only be 21 as well, or he might even be younger. Uh, but he uh, mm -hmm. he uh, impressed with the brief stint he had uh, in uh, Cleveland. He played a big part. 
in their uh, championship run. Uh, so another good, solid defenseman of the future. It's an area they wanted to address. They certainly have taken some big steps. Yeah. And Zach Wierenski is a player that I really like. Yeah. I think he's going to be a good defenseman for them going forward. And this could be a dangerous team on the blue line. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so for years to come. David Savard, uh, 25. Uh, he, he played 65 games last year. Another good, solid, young defenseman. Ryan Murray, again, boy, they really are going to be young on the blue line. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see with Tortorella if they can all come together and uh, hopefully he can be patient and uh, mm -hmm. you know, let them work through their mistakes and stuff like that. Uh, I really do like where this team is going. Definitely. Uh, veteran Fetter Tootin. Um, I'm not sure what his contract situation is. He's definitely the veteran on the team. 67 games played last year. And Jack Johnson, a good, solid defenseman. Uh, Dalton Pro. Uh, the, the names are, they do look like they have a good, solid, workmanlike mm -hmm. defense. And uh, they are going to get some additions from uh, Cleveland. So uh, I think, you know, they're going in the right direction on the blue line. Yeah, and I've heard uh, Tootin's name come up a lot in trades. They're really, he's another player that they're really trying to trade uh, just because um, contract size versus value he brings to the team, especially with so many young guys coming up. Yeah. That they, they're going to need to pay. So he's a guy that they're going to, they're trying to look to move. Um, I've heard Johnson's name a little bit out there. I think, personally, I think that would be a mistake. His contract's 4.3 mil, and I I think that's a good value for him. He's playing top um, top line minutes, and man, that's that's a good contract for a guy who's playing on your top pairing. Yeah, he'll have to minutes. fight for them top line minutes now with the with the depth they have. Yeah, what, looking at it, I, I do believe Tootin could have some value. I mean, he's not a true dowdy or anything, but he's a good solid defensive defenseman mm. and. Uh, you know, he might, it might not be a bad player that, uh, you know, a team that maybe is looking for to add a little depth or something on the blue line. I don't know. That that, that would be a, a good player to uh, to have available on trade. Of course, then you lose a little bit of that veteran presence and their, mm -hmm. their defense is so young. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. I do uh, believe in goal, Trent, that this team is solid for years to come. Uh Sergei Bobrovsky, who, uh, you know, he's pretty much been their go-to guy. He has endured some injury problems the last couple seasons. Mm -hmm. But we found out this past year that, you know, I think the year before, the team was really devastated by losing him. Yeah. Uh, and this past season, they have a couple of young guys uh, that worked to win the championship in Cleveland. Uh, Yunus Corpusello ended up playing 31 games. Uh, he actually posted a winning record, 16-11-4, uh, and four, which uh, when, uh, when you're on a team that finishes 28, <laughs> that's not bad at all. No, not bad um, at all. So, I mean, Eunice Corpusalo and Anton Forsberg, uh, Corpusalo is 22, Forsberg 23, but Brodsky himself is only 27. So they have a pretty nice little three-headed monster going in goal there. and uh, No pun intended. Yeah, I think they actually might, uh, heck, I mean, they might push Bobrovsky a bit. They, 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 they might. I think he's, if he can stay healthy for a whole season, and that might be something that hurts his trade value, um, but just health concerns. But if he can stay healthy, he's one of the best goalies in the NHL, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. And that's tough to trade, but... You know, Corpus Allo, he, he is a he's a good goaltender, good young goaltender. Yeah. And you're seeing that this year, a lot of these young goalies just stepping up. You know, a lot of the times you're waiting for a goalie to hit 26 before you're considering making him a starter. And now all of a sudden these 23, 22, 23, 24-year-old uh, goalies are starting to push out these veteran guys that um, are thought to be some of the best tenders in the league. Yeah. Like. You look at uh, in uh, Tampa, um, Ben Bishop's job could be in jeopardy. Penguins just won the cup. 
Mark Andre Fleury's job could be in jeopardy. He's being chopped, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Howard, you know, his job's yeah. in jeopardy. He won a cup. Um, you know, all have tons of playoff experience. Yeah, that's a good point. So Well, I think, you know, in the modern era now, like if it if it was uh before the salary cap era, you would you would do what you had to do. You would take uh, Bobrovsky and you would add one of the other guys and if uh, Bobrovsky uh, needed more money, then he would just pay. You wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. You know? But nowadays, you have to make the books balance. So it uh, becomes a little bit more difficult. And then, you know, if it's an area where you can save a little bit, it's always good to do. But I do think that uh, we already mentioned Wierenski. There's a couple others. Uh, between Corpusala and Forsberg, I believe whoever had the, has the better camp will probably come out. Mm -hmm. and be with this team right from day one. Unfortunately, that means uh, Curtis McElhinney, one of the best uh, backups in the NHL, is likely seeing his last days with the Blue Jackets. I'm, you'll have to go through his uh, contract status, but mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if uh, he's back. And I guess that's all I have on that. Yeah, and uh, one thing I kind of want to point out, you know, we've heard the famous Brabrovsky. Yeah. But it's kind of fun because you could go forward, defense, goaltending, Dubinsky, Warinsky, <laughs> Brabrovsky. Oh boy, yeah, that's a pretty nice little trio there. That is. Um, so yeah, if we're looking at the contracts going forward, uh, Rene Bork, whose production wasn't quite there this year, he was making three and a half, he, or uh, almost three and a half. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent, so there's some cap space there. Um, William Carlson, a restricted free agent. Generally, restricted free agents are guys you're going to want to hang on to. Um, he had decent numbers. Too. Yeah. Seth Jones on defense. He's the big one, and they don't have a lot of free agents going into the season, just the three. Seth Jones, restricted free agent, he is the big one for that team. You know, he could be looking for a very big deal, um, eight year contract. He could be looking for it all right now. Um, they might push, they might get him on a bridge deal, but I think he's going to be signed to a big long-term deal, and I think that's something the Blue Jackets are going to want to give him, um, not just because they have to. They're going to want to tie this guy down for a long time. Well, I think the future looks bright for this team in terms of talent, of players mm -hmm. that are coming up. The future is not so bright in terms of contracts. You went to this actually... This season doesn't look so bad, but they are locked into a number of five and six million dollar deals yeah. with some of these guys that maybe aren't really worth that kind of money at this point. Um, I don't know if, the, if they'll figure out a way to maybe get out of some of that this summer um, and maybe go with some of the younger guys, mm -hmm. uh, but it'll be interesting to see if they free up some money, who knows, maybe they can... Uh, pull off something big. Uh, we do know they're going to have um, somebody good is going to be added to this team. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Pooley Yarby or a frontline center, frontline defense, something like that. Uh, they are going to have a really good addition to this team in the fall. And once again, I'm going to be sucked in. <laughs> and I'm going to be cheering for this team. But just John Tortorella Get this team out of the gate. 500 through the first 10 games, please. And stay with the pack. And this team has got a good chance. Yep. I agree, Jimmy. And you're talking about some of those big term contracts. We got Dubinsky making 5.8, Felino 5.5, Clarkson 5 and a quarter, yeah. Scott Hartnell 5 and 3 quarters, or I mean, excuse me, 4 and 3 quarter, um, and then 2 and five, 4 and a half. So those are some of the big ones that they might consider moving some of them are less likely I don't think Dubinsky or Felino are quite on the chopping block but yeah. you know with that kind of money you're expected to produce points I think you're likely going to end up bringing money back to you're not going to trade a, a five million dollar guy for a draft pick I mean it'd be nice if you could <laughs> but, you know a lot of times the other team has somebody they're trying to get rid of too yeah so time will tell uh, like I said the uh, it's up to uh, Yarnell keep line and to figure out a way to get this uh, this from under this sort of weight that's on his shoulder mm -hmm. contract-wise. 
But if anybody do it, he can. Uh, I like this team. Sounds good. Stay classy, Midwest.